Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome Cal Ori back to the show, who is the author of The Healing Powers of Honey, and she's actually written an entire series, The Healing Powers of Olive Oil, The Healing Powers of Vinegar, The Healing Powers of Chocolate, and today we're going to be focusing on The Healing Powers of Honey, because honey is so interesting. Imagine this, one-third of the food supply is pollinated by bees. They pollinate more than 90 crops, and they're woven into our food chain. Not only is honey an antioxidant and a superfood, it's helpful in curing many diseases. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it from Cal Ori about the healing powers of honey. Good morning. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, everybody. First of all, lay the context for honey having healing powers. When a lot of us have been told that if we have honey, it's going to turn itself into sugar in our body and create diseases. That's true. A lot of conservative nutritionists, well, a few of them that I spoke with said, you know, sugar is sugar. That includes honey. And they really didn't get it. But during my research, I went a little bit further, a lot further actually around the world with experts with MDs, PhDs, and um, nutritionists who get it that honey is antioxidant rich. It does have some minerals and vitamins, but it's the antioxidants that make it the healthier sweetener choice rather than table sugar or those artificial sweeteners you'll see advertised on TV. Honey is totally natural, and we're talking about the pure, raw, unprocessed honey, um, which is much healthier than table sugar and high fructose corn syrup. And that's another thing you'll see in these um, like drinks you buy at the store um, in different uh, um, processed foods, cookies and cakes. If you look at the, the nutritional label and if it says high fructose corn syrup, stay clear. If you see all natural honey, much better for you. But we don't really know, most of us who are consumers, how to buy honey and the distinctions between honey from this market or from this area. And I'd like you to brief us a little bit about this. I mean, your book is really good. I found it enchanting to read and very informative. It was a wonderful adventure about honey and the bees. But what are we supposed to buy and why? Oh, well, there's been a lot of media coverage about that when you buy honey at the grocery store, your supermarket, you're not even getting the pure raw stuff. You're not even getting honey that it's unadulterated and it's in, it includes all these contaminated things that you don't want to eat that are bad for you. But... <laughs> Again, um, there's a there's a lot of large companies, um, honey companies, that sell their honey at large supermarkets, and where the honey is fine, it just says, it, you just have to look for the right. For, you have to look at the label, and if it says all natural honey, yes, it is probably all natural honey. For one, Sue B Honey, they're very they're a very very large company. It comes in the little bear, and they sent me all different types of their honeys, and they're upgrading where they they sell pure honey, raw honey, um, all natural honey, premium honey. So you just and. Well, also, you have, a, lot, a lot of people believe you should go to your local beekeeper and then get honey right from the source. You know you're getting it from the honeybees. But not everybody is so lucky. I did travel in my research 50 miles to Reno, rural, rural Reno, and I did hook up with the beekeeper, and I did come home with jars of honey straight from his honeybees, his queen bees that I saw. Um, again, not everybody has that convenience, but... A lot of people do. Still, you can get good honey at health food stores. Probably that would be your first choice. First choice local, second health food stores, third supermarkets. And before third, online. In my book at the end, I have a comprehensive um, online list where you can get honeys all over the world where you can be guaranteed that these honeys are natural, the pure stuff, the good stuff, the healthy stuff that has the antioxidants that I'm talking about. And those are the things that you find in fruits and vegetables that keep your body, your immune system healthy and can stave off cancer, heart disease, keep you living a more quality 
life and help you live longer. Isn't it true that the reason to go to a local beekeeper or a local store where you know the source of the honey is because it has something to do with your immune system? In other words, the pollen is local? Well, that's what they say. It's anecdotal. It hasn't really been proven any groundbreaking studies, but um, a lot of beekeepers and followers fans will tell you that if you get the local honey within a 50-mile radius, it'll help you stave off um, allergies. I um, definitely am prone to sinus infections. I had a killer headache the day I visited that beekeeper, and it's like I felt like I was going to a drug dealer. I need my honey, and I <laughs> so wanted to try it then and there to see if it would work, but it doesn't work like, you know, immediately. He he told me, I think it, he's been told by the, his fans, his customers, that it can take up to two weeks at least to see if there's a difference. Um, because at that time I was re- receiving so many honeys from all around the world, I don't think I just stayed with his. So does honey help with sinus and infections? Um, it may. Um, it, personally, I I do believe that it does help, but again, it's anecdotal. There's, while there are a lot of um, groundbreaking studies about honey uses, um, you know, scientific studies that prove that it can help stave off like coughs, um, topically used uh, Manuka honey, definitely proof that it works. Um, as far as for allergies, it's still um, folklore and anecdotal. Now, you still emphasize that the darker honeys are where the action is. Why? Uh, yeah, that's what I learned. Um, it, it, it takes a while to get used to it, I admit. It's not. these. Um, the first chapter, I have a list, the Healing Honey Parade, and I list about... 10, more than 10 honeys that have the most antioxidants and they're the darker honeys, such as buckwheat, dark and rich, high in antioxidants. Buckwheat, it's a very strong tasting honey. Um, I, I did it, but I'd rather... <laughs> it's like dark chocolate. When you, you know, if you've never really preferred dark chocolate and you just start eating 70% to 80% cocoa content chocolate, it's, it's a little bit hard to enjoy and smile and say you love it. You sort of have to work your way up. Like goldenrod, that is a good honey. It's amber. It's darker. It's golden. Um, it's used for medicine, medicine, medical reasons. Manuka honey, again, some people do take it, um, uh, they do consume it, but it more that it's used mostly topically, um, and it has awesome antibacterial properties, and that's why it's used topically for staph infections, for wounds. Personally, I did try it. I was sent a lot of it from Australia and New Zealand, where it's very expensive, um, hard to get, but if they are using it in hospitals in the United States. And then back to my story, I did, uh, I cut my foot in the summer when I was doing the research and I didn't want to rush off to the doctor and or take antibiotics. And I remembered I had the Manuka honey. It's dark amber orange. And I actually put put it on the bottom of my foot. I swear to God, just like apple cider vinegar, within a couple of days, my foot was healed. It was magical. It's awesome. And it does have anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties. So it, it was wonderful. Um, wildflower is another healing, um, definitely healing honey. It's light golden, so it's not that dark. Again, I suggest going a little bit, going with these honeys and then moving up to the darker ones. Um, Hawaiian Christmas berry, it's rich golden, high in antioxidants. Um, blueberry, which is really great, um, tasting, golden in color, rich in antioxidants. There's so many. Um, I have a whole chapter where I talk about more than 30 varietals, is what you call them, different flavors. Um, and those are, those are tastier than the ones I mentioned, I must admit. Uh, but there's just a huge world of flavors of honey. It just... And once you start trying them, it's like chocolate. You want to keep going. You, you'll be surprised. You know, most people are familiar with orange blossom honey. Right. 
Um, it, which is good for cooking, um, baking, and just to put on your toast or drizzle over fruits. Um, but once you get into 